In this video we'll talk about how the standard circadian rhythm is structured and we'll also explore how you can find out how shifted it is depending on a bunch of factors. Like what time zone you're in, when solar noon occurs in your location and so on. This video is part of our series on the dark period and if you haven't seen the other videos in this series I encourage you to do so. Since knowing what the dark period is is essential for polyphasic sleepers if they wish to stay healthy. Stay tuned! Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So this video will both be about how to evaluate your lifestyle and environment and change your sleep to fit that and how to mend your environment to fit your sleep schedule. The largest cause for issues here is the circadian rhythm with its peak sleep times between 6 and 9 in the morning for the REM peak and uh, 9 and 12 in the evening for the SWS peak. It's important that these peaks contain as much sleep as possible on polyphasic schedules, but that places a very clear issue for most people with busy lives who are unable to go to sleep early. There's a, however a trick that can cause the body to shift these peak times, and that is by giving it enough daytime inputs at desired times. To understand how this is done, we must first explain a few words. The solar noon, which is sometimes called the astronomical noon, uh, refers to the timing when the sun is in the highest position in the sky. This happens nearly at the same time every day on a specific longitude if you ignore daylight savings time. Uh, and is therefore a good event to compare other set timings to in the body. The solar noon is biologically meant to happen at 12 in the day, which means that an unshifted circadian rhythm will have its natural SWS peak at 9 in the evening to 12 in the evening and its REM peak at 6 in the morning to 9 in the morning if you wake up at 8 in the morning on a normal monophasic schedule. If your time zone is not in synchronization with the solar time, and the solar noon is scheduled at, for example, one in, in the day. Uh, it results in your peak be, peaks being naturally shifted one hour later. In this case, the peaks would be located between uh, 10 in the evening and 1 at night, and 7 in the morning and 10 in the morning. This would be what is defined as local noon, or in other words, it's the local time when solar noon occurs, okay? Anyways, this time varies from country to country because some countries have a shifted local noon for economical or cultural reasons, with a couple of notable examples being the Netherlands and Spain. Uh, if you want to find the timing of your local solar noon, you can do so on timeanddate.com and you can find the link that in the description of the video. The last expression I want to emphasize is the biological noon, since this is the time of the day that your body treats as noon. Uh, or in other words, it's the time of the day that's 12 according to your body clock, okay, 12 in the day. Uh, the timing of the biological noon is often shifted by late night use of electronic screens in today's world. Uh, and establishing the timing of the biological noon is important to help you assess at what times the optimal sleep peaks would be. Unfortunately, determining the this time has some complications, but fortunately specific timings in the circadian rhythm can be used as a marker that can then be compared to the timing of the natural solar based rhythm uh, in order to determine how far your circadian rhythm is shifted. Okay, so I know that this is some, sounds complicated, but we'll get to it, you'll understand it more. The easiest method to do this is by monitoring the body temperature uh, gradient throughout the day. See, okay, uh, the lowest temperature point happens at around 6 in the morning on a natural solar rhythm where you wake up at 8 in the morning. So by comparing the timing of that event to the local time of the event, the timing of the biological noon can be established. The REM peak also coincides with the minimum temperature peak, 
uh, which makes calculations with very easy. I'll, I'll present a few examples to help you understand these calculations practically with all times referring to the local time. Uh, if you're only listening to the video, I suggest that you look at the screen because the times will be displayed here too, so that you'll have an easier time understanding, okay? So the baseline natural solar rhythm has its minimum temperature peak at 6 in the morning, its biological noon at 12 in the day, its SWS peak at 9 to 12 in the evening, and its REM peak at 6 to 9 in the morning. The first example I want to highlight has its minimum temperature peak at 7 in the morning, okay, so it's shifted one hour forwards. That means that the biological noon happens at 1 in the day, the SWS peak happens at 10 to 1 at night, and the REM peak happens at 7 to 10 in the morning. The second example has the minimum temperature peak at 4 in the morning, okay? In this situation, the biological noon happens at 10, the SWS peak is at 7 to 10 in the evening, and the REM peak is at 4 to 7 in the morning. And the third and last example I want to show is where the minimum temperature peak is at 8.30 in the morning. In this case, the biological noon happens at 4.30 in the day, uh, the SWS peak is scheduled from 11.30 to 2.30 in the night, and the REM peak is from 8.30 to 11.30 in the morning slash day. If you want to shift your circadian rhythm to accommodate your schedule more, it's easiest to do that uh, the easiest way to do that is to start your photo period, or the time when it's light outside at a different time. Because your minimum temperature peak is coupled to the start of the photo period, okay, uh, you can shift it by uh, proxy and by proxy shift your biological noon, uh, your REM peak and your SWS peak just by ending your dark period at a different time. Okay, it's crazy. <laughs> Great. Uh, be sure to use a strong light to do this of at least 5000 lux, uh, preferably 10,000, or just step outside in the sun, whichever option you want to use. Uh, this way you can shift your circadian rhythm quite nicely, but I don't want to dwell on, dwell on that too much, uh, and I'll instead I'll talk about how to schedule a late core on a polyphasic sleep schedule in the next video, where we'll talk about this more. Uh, if you don't want to miss that video, be sure to subscribe so you are notified when we upload it. Okay, so you should now hopefully understand the structure of your circadian rhythm better and how to find out when your SWS and REM peaks are. If you want me to make a video on how you determine when your minimum temperature peak occurs, be sure to like this video so, you ca so I can see that there's an interest for it. But regardless, if you have any questions about the information that I've gone through in this video, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't checked out, uh, uh, if you haven't checked it out already, be sure to sign up for the Dark Period course on polyphasic.net, and you can also check out other courses that we have there. You'll find the link there in the description. Okay. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads, and I'll see you in the next video. Remember to nap well, people. Uh, the yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, it's crazy. <laughs> Great.